Okay, so now we're going to talk about nutrient uptake and plant roots. And so when we talk about nutrient uptake and plant roots, what we're talking about is how does the plant get things out of the soil when it can't move? It doesn't have a way to like reach out and grab the nutrients that it needs. And so we've got all these different minerals that are in the soil and we want to get them into the roots, but how do we do it? How do we coerce them to want to go into the root? And the way that we're going to do that is that most of the things that the plant needs are either cations or anions. And so if you can kind of think back to chemistry about what that might mean, we have cations and anions. Cations have a positive charge, anions have a negative charge. And so we want to get things that have a positive charge or a negative charge into the root of the plant. And luckily, most of the stuff that we need, like potassium, for example, or nitrates, stuff like that, they have a charge. And so if you want to make this positively charged particle come into the plant root, one really effective way to do that is to basically make this positively charged uh, cation unhappy about its current position. So let's imagine here's a plant root. And outside of the root, we've got these positively charged minerals. They might be potassium, like we've shown up here. They could be some other cation that we need, but they have a positive charge. Well, all plant roots at all times have proton pumps. And these proton pumps, which are in the roots, are constantly pumping protons out into the soil. And so they're just sitting here firing H's off. Well, I should have maybe use two different colors or something, but they're constantly firing off all of these hydrogens. And so since they're constantly firing off all of these hydrogens, which have a positive charge, they're making anything in the soil that also has a positive charge not happy about where it is. Because you're making this soil, all of it around, these positively charged particles, really, really positive. And remember that likes repel. And so these other positively charged particles, they all of a sudden don't want to be there. Well, the only location within the soil that is not positive is the plant root. The plant root is negative, not because it actually contains negatively charged things, but because it doesn't have all of those positive charges. So the plant root is negative relative to the positive charge of the soil, which means that all of a sudden this plant root looks like the only refuge for these positively charged cations. So that means all these positively charged little guys, they're going to go, ooh, go away, run away, run away, and they're going to end up retreating into the root of the plant. And so the plant is able to convince these things to come into the roots by basically making their whole environment toxic to them, to where they no longer want to be there. So all the positively charged things definitely want to come into the root. So now your question is, well, how do you get the negatively charged stuff? Now the negatively charged stuff, it's totally happy where it is. And so why would it come into the root? Because now the root has a negative charge. And the way that we do that is we can couple the transport of these positively charged cations with negatively charged things like nitrate. And that's what's being shown right here. We have anion uptake in your notes. And what this picture is showing you is that we have pumps that for every time that it draws across a positively charged cation, it's also going to just take in the nearest negatively charged anion and move both of them across. So every time that one of these positives come, it's going to be coming with a little negative that's attached to it. So that way we get the positively charged stuff we want in the soil, like potassium. We also get negatively charged stuff that's in the soil, like nitrate, to come across, even though <clears throat> it technically should be repelled by the root. So we're going to pump protons out into the soil, and that's going to let us get both positively charged cations and negatively charged anions into the root. Finally, we can have neutral solutes. And that's not that hard. All it is is that all, you have this massive influx of positively charged things going into the root. Everything that's positive all of a sudden is going to want to go into the root. So just like we coupled the positive with the negative, we can also couple the uh, transport of that positively charged particle with something that is neutral. And an example of something that's neutral could be like sulfur. And so by flooding the soil with positively charged protons, we can absorb both cations, anions, and neutral particles. Finally, this gets to like, if you have soil that is ideal for plants, 
it oftentimes will have what pH? What pH do you think it'll have? Well, <clears throat> remember that the more hydrogens that are in the soil, the more unhappy all these things are and the more they want to go into the roots. And as soon as things start flooding into the roots, we can transport all three of them. And so remember the pH is a measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ions in the soil. pH is a measurement of protons that are in the soil. So we've got a whole bunch of protons, but remember that the pH scale is a log scale, so it's kind of like backwards. So a whole lot of protons in the soil would actually be a low pH, and a low pH is an acid. So typically soils that are really good for growing vegetables or for growing crops or just for growing plants are going to be acidic, meaning that they've got a whole bunch of positively charged uh, cations dissolved within that soil.